the wise change. Hey there, parents, staff, scholars, and the entire Ignite community. Although it's not February anymore, we at Ignite Middle School know and understand the importance of black history and the importance of black history and why we celebrate it during the month of February. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I thought we just celebrate black history because that's just what we're supposed to do. Just like we're supposed to celebrate Hispanic heritage in, no in September and American Indian heritage in November. That's just what we do. That's just how we do in America. We give every minority group their own month, and we take that month to learn and celebrate their culture, right? <sighs> but have you ever just thought, right, about why we learn and celebrate these minority groups for just one month? Well, because we need to know the history too, I, I guess. Okay, let me ask you this. Throughout your academic career, would you say African-American history only happened on African soil or Hispanic history only happened on Spanish soil? The answer is no. Ooh, that is a super good point. Let me chime in. Okay, so you want to know why? That's because it all happened on American soil. The better question is, why is it that we only learn about one type of history throughout the entire year and withhold the other types of history until their specified months if it's all American history? That's a great question and we should all be thinking about that. American history should be inclusive of all types of American history regardless of the ethnic background because it all happened on American soil, like you said. For sure. Okay, all right. Okay, you know, actually, I have the perfect video. It might be a little elementary to hear, but trust me, the message is powerful. All right, I get it. <laughs> Look, I didn't mean us any harm. Okay, it's okay, I promise. Because you are not alone in your thinking. Like, just remember, African American history is American history. The WISE Channel celebrates African Americans who did amazing things. You may be wondering, why do we even celebrate Black History Month? Well, one reason is because we shouldn't just learn the history of people who look like us. If that was the case, classrooms with all African American students would be like this. And now, Deshaun will list all the presidents of the United States. <laughs> Barack Obama. Good job, Deshaun. How silly would that be? But what about this? This month in class, we will read books by Ronald Dahl and Dr. Seuss. We'll learn about three great American inventors, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, and Henry Ford. 
and in social studies, we'll research European explorers. And remember to get your costumes ready for Colonial Day, where we'll pretend we're living in the 1800s before the Civil War. Seriously? The truth is, those authors, inventors, and explorers did amazing things. But just learning about them does not tell the whole story. Whether or not our own classroom is diverse, we should all celebrate our diverse American history. I celebrate African American history because it's my history. But guess what? It's your history too. That's because black history is American history. And as Americans, it belongs to all of us. Hispanic American history is our history. Native American history, Asian American history, Indian American history, and yes, Caucasian American history are all our history. In 1926, a scholar named Carter G. Woodson noticed Americans were not learning much about African American history. So he started what went on to become Black History Month. And now, nearly 100 years later, every February, we continue the tradition of highlighting African Americans who did amazing things. Because black history is American history. Let's talk. Why is it important to learn about different types of people who made history? Carter G. Woodson started Black History Month around 100 years ago. What would you like to start today that could last for 100 years? Did you know we have a playlist where you can see all our Black History videos? You should check it out. Have you subscribed to the WISE channel yet? If not, do it right now and make sure you hit that little bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Black History Program here at Ignite Middle School. My name is Carl. And my name is Deja. Bienvenidos, Barca de Zua and Caribou. We are excited to welcome you. Ignite Middle School is excited for everyone to enjoy each presentation and act prepared. We, we, have, have, en we have endured a winter storm and lost planning time. However, when it comes to preparing for and representing black history in America, no stone was left unturned. Everyone participating both on the stage and behind the scenes helped to bring a single thought into a fruitful and informing masterpiece. Our Wise ultimate Channel goal celebrate. is for you to leave this program with a new knowledge of the brave black Americans who helped shape our world today. Thank okay. you, we're excited, and we hope you're excited. Please enjoy the show. In a little bit, we will be joined by our Mr. and Mistress of Ceremony, Ambria and Eric, but now, before we go any further, I want to make sure everyone remembers black history is our history. When I say black history, you say it's yours. When I say black history, say it's yours. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. And we say it loud and proud again. There's no America without the African. Fighting to get it equal. Black history, the story of the people. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. It's yours. Only 28 days in the month of February. It's just a kickoff. We don't stop till every textbook and every class give up the glory. The true and living facts are his and her story. People want to know why we still celebrate it. Road been rocky and we made it. We elated. Our survivors, strivers, fighters, singers. Get us dropping names like we have butterfingers. Rosa, King, X-Truth, the greatness. Ali, Fred Douglas. These are the basics. But how about Bessie Coleman, the fly aviatrix, or Catherine Johnson, who helped launch the spaceships, or Louis Latimer illuminating home. Dr. Shelly Jackson improving telephones or Fred McKinley Jones keeping ice cream cold. I could go on and on till my body get old. Left to the right, top to the floor. When I say black history, say it's yours. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. Fought the revolution in both world wars. Black history, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. Black history, yes, it's yours. Gotta say it loud and proud again. There's no America without the 
African. Fighting to get it equal. Black history, the story of the people. We gave you traffic lights to stop the crash. Almanacs, gas furnace, and gas masks. Gave you hip hop, teela rock, blues and jazz. And fresh new dances with flair and pizzazz. Automatic gear shifts to move the cars. Potato chips and peanut butter in jars. Laundry dryers, home security systems, super soakers and suspenders. I could go on listing. Many contributions across institutions. Supreme Court and Ball Court, it's been an evolution. And we sing it every day. Blue notes like Harold Melvin for this Billy Holiday. We know what's going on. Thanks to Marvin Gaye. Get a bounce in our step on cue like Kid and Play. Gwendolyn and Kendrick, our poets represent. Hold mics tight like truths that's self-evident. Yeah, we know our hero's fantastic. But gotta remember the forgotten on the Atlantic. We gotta honor our departed. Taken from the land where humanity started. Left to the right, top to the floor. When I say black history, say it's yours. Thank you for that introduction. My name is Ambria, and I'm your mistress of ceremony. My name is Eric. I'm your mister of the ceremony. We'll be working together to make sure the show advances smoothly to the end. Y'all just don't know. Y'all are in for an amazing treat tonight. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now we begin this program and listen to one of our very own riffs. Since hometown of Jacksonville, Florida, as part of Lincoln's birthday celebration of February 12, 1900, by a choir of 5,500 sc school children at Segregation Sign School, where James Wilden Johnson was principal. Lift every voice and sing to life and ever free. Ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the lifting skies. Let it resound loud as the roar. Sing a song full of the faith that the jazz has made part of. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Lift every voice and sing to life and heaven ring. Ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the jazz has made part of. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Lift every voice and sing to life and heaven ring. Ring with the harmony. Of living. 
sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun, a bright new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Woo! That sounded amazing. That scholar is really talented. She's going places, I tell you. I wonder who she is. Yeah, she's going places right to the bank. That boy will make her, I mean, you some money. We know it's you, but hey, if you don't know, now you know singing is just one of her many superpowers. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Thank you, though. Enough of me. Enough about me. Let's talk about poetry. Coming up, we have a few of our very own scholars read impactful, powerful, and truly inspirational poems written by African-American poets. But before we listen to the poets at night, we will learn about someone truly inspirational poet still making history today. Hi, I'm Black History Maven, and I'm feeling inspired today because the 2021 inaugural poet Amanda Gorman welcomed in the Biden-Harris administration with a beautiful verse and a stellar reading. At age 22, this National Youth Poet Laureate is the youngest inaugural poet in history. She's also the third Black poet to take the inaugural stage in history, but believe it or not, that's not significant. That's because there have only been five inaugural poets total in U.S. history. A poet read for JFK in 1961, for Bill Clinton in 1993 and 1997, and for Barack Obama in 2009 and 2013. Two of these poets, Maya Angelou, who read for Clinton, and Elizabeth Alexander, who read for Obama, are Black. Richard Blanco, who read for Obama's second inauguration, is gay and Latino. Maya Angelou's poem is called On the Pulse of the Morning. Elizabeth Alexander's inaugural poem is titled Praise Song of the Day. And today's poem by Amanda Gorman is titled The Hill We Climb. It addressed very recent events the storming of the Capitol. Gorman says she studied the works of past poet laureates, as well as speakers from history like Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King Jr., and Winston Churchill to explore how, as she put it, rhetoric can be used for good. Of course, today's inauguration with the swearing in of Vice President Kamala Harris has made it a bright day for many of us. Amanda Gorman is right. The new dawn blooms as we free it. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, my name is Dominic Drinkwater, and today I am reading a poem called I Can Make a Difference. I can make a difference by trying to change everybody's life that are going through a really tough time. If you are broke, I will give. If you are heartbroken, I will fix it. If you are really sad, I'll be, I'll be there want to make you glad. If the world goes against you, I'll be there to help you. Hi, my name is Kennedy and I'll be reading Our Deepest Fear by Moraine Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing in life about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. 
And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we liberate from our own fear, our promise liberates others. Hi, my name is Nia Akibla, and today I will be reciting the, a poem called The Journey by Kai. The journey continues no matter the cost, no matter the friendship that you may have lost. Remember the hurt, remember the pain. Let it be a force that drives you insane. They will call you crazy, they will call you mad. They cannot imagine the life you've had. Until what was broken is broken no more, until police brutality is scorned at its core. Until every cop will serve and protect and ceasing person kill on every quivering neck. Until every cop look over his shoulder and show some respect when he pulls you over. The journey continues, no matter the pain, inflicted by those who have little shame. Hi, I am and I, and I will be reading a poem from Amanda Gorman. I thought I'd awaken to a world in mourning, heavy clouds crowding and society storming. But there's uh, something different on this golden morning, something magical in the sunlight, white and warming. I see a dad with a stroller taking a jog. Across the street, a bright-eyed girl chases her dog. A grandma on her porch and fingers her rosary. She grins as her young neighbor brings her groceries. While we might feel small, separate, and all alone, our people have never been more closely tethered. The question isn't if we will weather this unknown, but how we will weather this unknown together. Soon on this meaningful morn, we mourn and we mend like light. We, could be, we can't be broken even when we bend. As one, we will defeat both despair and disease. We stand with healthcare heroes and all employees, with families, libraries, schools, waiters, artists, to businesses, restaurants, and hospitals hit hardest. We ignite not in light, but in lack thereof, for it is a toss that we truly learn to love. In this chaos, we will discover clarity and suffering. We must find solidarity. For it's our grief that gives us a gratitude, spirals us how to find hope. If we ever lose, I am sure that this act wasn't endured. And do not ignore the pain. Give it purpose. Use it. Read children's books. Dance alone to DJ music. Know that this distance will make our hearts grow fonder. From a wave of our woes in the world will emerge stronger. We'll observe how the burdens braved by humankind are also the moments that make us humans kind. Let every find us courage by closer heading the lighter before the tide is over. When the end will smiley sweetly, finding seeing and test times, we became the dust of beings by youth and Amanda Gorman. My name is Asiya Kalanda, and I am reading We Were the Mad. My name is Asiya Kalanda, and I am reading We Were the Mask. We were the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This death we pay to human guile. We tore in bleeding hearts we smile and mouth with myriad subtitles. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smell, but oh great cries, our cries to thee form tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile, but we let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask.
My name is Brayson, and I will be reading TBIB 2020. The protectors failed to protect us, failed to serve, at least me, at least my family. My pigment makes a white woman clutch her purse when I go by. All I tried to say was hi. She can turn my greeting into an allegation. Then here come those boys in blue, those who refuse to live by the truth. They service a government that believes I belong in a cage, menace to society. To a cop, six feet under is where I should be. You step on my brother's necks while gunning down my sisters. You shoot me in my front yard and claim that my melanin was a sin worthy of death. The nation tells me that I should always fear those boys in blue before they leave me black and blue. With a bullet through my chest or a knee to my neck, we'll always protest for those who have been laid to rest. Change must come. Our revolution will be won. Because at any encounter with those boys in blue, I send an I love you text because I know that I could be next. I feel truly inspired and thankful for the message achieved by each and every one of the poems. Me too. I love how Bracelet just told me everything I needed to know in um, under a minute, but they were all amazing. In a bit, we're going to learn about a few hidden figures within the African-American history by Kennedy Mitchell. But before, let's enjoy the musical stylings of John Legend and Common singing Glory. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be
Hi, my name is Kennedy, and I'll be reading, I'll be telling you about a couple hidden figures in black history. First, we have Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was a neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where in the early 20th century, African Americans created a self-sufficient, prosperous business district. The term Black Wall Street was used as a race riot of 1921. African Americans worked mainly as servants in Tulsa, and it's where they developed their own insular society with its own economy. Black Wall Street was thriving at the time of Tulsa's race riot. However, the riot took a heavy financial toll on African Americans. Second, I'll be telling you about Jim Brown. Jim Brown is a pro football Hall of Famer that was a fullback on the Cleveland Browns from 1857 to 1965 and is considered to be the greatest rusher of all time, other than Emmett Smith, of course. In his career, Jim Brown ran for over 12,000 yards with 106 touchdowns and an average of 5.2 yards per carry and 104.3 yards per game. Jim Brown was a pro baller for every season he played. He also won league MVP three times in NFL championship during his career with the Browns. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful song. Also, Candy, thanks for being some of our one of our uh, hidden African American heroes, like by highlighting the facts of their lives. Okay, cause my bestie did that per. Um, but y'all, there's a song in my head, and I cannot get it out. Like I can't focus. Like it's gonna drive me crazy for real. Y'all gotta know it. So I think it go like. Dun, 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 dun. Something like that. Oh, I know that song. Isn't she lovely by Stevie Wonder? Matter of fact, we had a special performance that will remind everybody of that song. Mm
Yep, yep, that was it. My mom was always playing that song. I'm so glad it'll finally be out of my head. Next, we have Tracy, who will reveal even more hidden figures of black history. Thank you, Tracy, for the insightful reading about hidden figures in black history. When I go, I want to be a racer. I remember my first grade teacher asked me that same question. I mean, I get what career path you want to take as an adult, but I want more just for career. I want to make a difference. I know I'm not alone. Let's see some how a very own and nice scholar will make a difference. Thank you. 
computer. Trust, I will be on the lookout for those lawyers and environmentalists. One thing about America is we are in dire need of, of a judicial system reform. On another note, everywhere around the world needs to move towards to reversing the harmful effects of climate change. Thank you for your dedication. We all look forward to your impact. Next, we will have a spoken word performance by Carl Bright. Girl, that was truly uplifting. I know pick the black children will could use that reminder. Let me write some of those lines down. Never mind. I know not the time or play, but you know what it's time for? Some dancing. Eric, please don't get up and start dancing. It's not giving what it's supposed to give at all. You know what, though? I do know what this program needs. A traditional African dance performed by our very own Ignite Scholars. Wow, our scholars are amazing. Thank you everyone for joining us for this incredible celebration of black history, which is our history. Ignite Middle School is a place where young people discover their superpowers. That is what we saw today. Ignite Middle School is a place where Students express and develop their big hearts and sharp minds, where they display their aligned actions and their sense of purpose. That's what we saw on display today. Ignite Middle School is one of the very few diversity by design schools in the nation, a model for our nation and for our world of community and diversity and togetherness. That's what we saw on display today. I am so incredibly proud of all of our scholars and the beautiful demonstrations and poems and songs and dances and speeches that they shared with us today. So rich, so powerful. Also, 
I would like to give a special thanks to the adults that encouraged and worked with them to help bring out these super displays that we saw today. A thank you to Mr. Mills and Ms. Cooney. A thank you to Mr. Hera and Ms. Prayan. And a very, very, very special thank you to the staff member who led and spearheaded and ignited this very special program, our very own Miss Taylor. With that, remember black history is our history. Thank you everyone for coming together for this beautiful celebration. We are? <laughs>